this morning. This song is definitely going to encourage what we see and shine. Sometimes the encouraging need encouragement too, amen. Amen.
beyond our general, general overseer, Marvis Chapman, senior pastor, Phil Ramos, her husband, and look who we got in the house! We honor Apostle Sam, Pastor Newman, uh, Miami, and uh, South Carolina, praise the Lord. We honor Evan, Evan Speckford, praise the Lord, honor our musicians, honor our evangelists. Honor everyone in the house of prayer, and I looked up and I saw Tim in the house. Yeah. My heart leaped. I saw Robin in the house. Yeah. I've been praying, I've been praying for you, Sister Robin. Amen. Miss you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for you all. We just blessed to be here. Isn't the Lord good? Yes. Amen. The Lord is, is so, so good. And so that song, I heard it in the spirit. Amen. When you come to church, listen to the music. Listen to the prelude. Because it's God using the musicians, the psalmists. Praise the Lord. The, the songs that we sing, listen to it. Because God is there to encourage you. Praise the Lord. God is there to, to, to strengthen you. As I told you last week, the Lord has been dealing with me. Praise the Lord. God deals with me. My pastor used to talk about the body of Christ. And this is one of the gifts that the Lord gave to me, imparted to me, praise the Lord, from her, is the body. I can feel what's going on in the body. I can feel what's happening with people, praise the Lord. If you are that way, and certainly I'm not the only one, praise the Lord, when you can feel what other people are going through, you, you have the body of Christ. It's your body allowing you to know what's happening, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's spiritual. Praise the Lord. Um, the Lord has been dealing with me about what the people of God are going through and, and what's confronting them and what's bothering them. Praise the Lord. And I'm different from other preachers. I've never looked at another preacher's sermon. I've never copied another preacher's sermon. And I guess I've preached thousands of sermons, but all of them have come from the Lord. Praise the Lord. I seek God. I ask God, what's the word? What, what word should I deliver? What word should I speak? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Never been in the seminary school. Uh, don't know all of the doxicology and the, the breakdowns that they have. I was taught by the late Chief Apostle Judy Williams, who was called by God. And she didn't go to school either. Her school was God's school. Praise the Lord. And I know the preachers are out there in the social media, they may have some critique by it. Uh, somebody tell the Lord, thank you. But I've never seen a person more anointed, more used by God than our late Chief Apostle Jimmy Williams. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. And if you want to go to school, that's fine. Amen. Get all the education that you can. Praise the Lord. But never think that your education supplants God's knowledge. If you read a little bit about who he called, they were not necessarily in the beginning. Paul was very educated, but he called Peter and they were fishermen. <laughs> and they, they weren't trained to be preachers. They weren't trained to be apostles. They weren't trained to be uh, um, uh, 
meaning school. Jesus taught them. Jesus educated them. Jesus ministered to them. And I'm not sure why I'm going this way, praise the Lord, but I just wanted to share with you, praise the Lord. Don't get caught up in, in, in the formality, the, the, the orthodox uh, teaching of men. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Paul said, my preaching, my teaching is not a man's wisdom, but a demonstration of the power of God, that your faith would not rest in the power of man, but in, in God. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. So the Lord's been dealing with me about what people are confronted with. Last week we talked about overcoming fear. And that's part of what we, we want to talk about today. It is not only overcoming fear, praise the Lord, but understanding fear. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. So to, to understand fear, fear is a stressful emotion. It arouses some type of impending danger evil or plan, whether it's a threat that is real or a threat that is imagined. So, so, so I want to talk to you a little bit. Last week we, we, we shared about some of the phobias. And phobia is this an intellectual word for fears. And we talked about Acrophobia, which is the fear of heights. There is arachnophobia, and some of you may be familiar with that. That's the fear of spiders. Yes. Then there's bibliophobia, which you probably not know much about, but that's the fear of books. Uh, then there's dentophobia, and we talked about that last week, and that's the fear of going to the dentist. Uh, entrophobia or entomophobia, which is the fear of insects. There even is a fear of gamophobia, which is the fear of marriage. We got quiet on that one. Yeah, some people are afraid to get married. I got quiet on that. Maybe let me move on here. Then there's a trophobia, which is the fear of doctors. Do you know some people won't go to the doctors? It's like I wouldn't go to the dentist. Amen. Some people won't go to doctors. Amen. Because they fear. Amen. If I go to the doctor, he's going to want to operate. If I go to the doctor, he's going to want to tell me something I don't want to hear. If I go to the doctor. Uh, but look, doctors are created as a resource by God. God used, God uses doctors. You can use, he can use the hands of a man as well as your spiritual hand. Uh-oh, he so said, what, he can, he, he used the, a donkey, huh? So he can use a man. The donkey spoke. Why can't he use a doctor? He can. There's lock key phobia, which is the fear of childbirth. Some women don't want to have children because they're afraid something's going to happen. There are different fears. Praise the Lord. Uh, I had the pleasure having breaking bad bread with uh, the, the, the Billings. Uh, on this week, my wife and I, amen, and spent a little time, and they shared with me a book that is written by uh, one of God's evangelists about fear. Uh, and and uh, I, I encourage you to be read. The more you read, the more you can learn. The more you can understand. Um, I, the, her name escapes me now, but I believe her first name is Deborah. She's an evangelist. And, and it's a good 
teaching and it talks about fear because it's what people are going through. People are, are struggling with fear. But I come to let you know that fear is not necessarily a bad thing. We got quiet on that. Now we know the scripture says the fear of the Lord is a good thing. The problem with fear is not that it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing when you become fearful. When you're full of fear. Where fear causes you to be in prison. Where fear stops you from moving forward. Where fear causes you to be overly anxious. Where fear uh, allows you not to prosper. When you, you have not feared, you haven't sinned if you have fear. It's when you're fearful. When you're full of fear. Where fear dictates your movement. Where it dictates what you say, what you do, and how you act. This is when uh, it's a danger. This is when it becomes sin. It's, this is when it, it, it stops you from moving forward. Somebody say amen. amen. God does not want us to be fearful. God wants us to uh, be without fear. Uh, you can go into the Bible and the Word of God countless times. You want to see fear not. When the scripture said, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? God doesn't want you to be fearful. Lord, I thank you right now. Um, we want to take you into the scripture uh, in Numbers. Numbers, the 14th chapter and the first verse. Uh, I, I, I do want to say... In the book of Job, as Vanda Smith is getting the scriptures for us, it's 14 and 1 through 14 and 4. That that Job said the very thing that I feared came upon me. When you are fearful, you are sort of predicting what's going to happen. It's almost a self-describing uh, prophecy. God does not want you to be full of fear. Fear can mobilize you to move forward. You can embrace fear. Uh, you know, sometimes we're afraid of people. We're afraid of their positions. We're afraid of their titles. We're afraid of what they say. Huh? But God said he's not man that you should fear. God doesn't want us to be afraid of people. No matter, he wants you to respect them. He wants you to honor people. He doesn't want you to disrespect anyone. But he doesn't want you to be afraid of people. God created man. Man is no different than you or I. God doesn't want you to set certain people in a pedestal or respect certain people and disrespect others. God wants you to understand that, that, that he's God. And besides you, besides him, there is no other. But he doesn't want us to be fearful. You have power over fear. Yeah. Now, I understand that, that fear comes by what you hear and what you see and what you feel. This is what the late chief apostle taught us. At the same time that, that you can have a spiritual eye, a spiritual ear, that, that you don't hear what the devil is saying. You don't Allow it to cause you to be paralyzed. Cause you to stop what you're doing. Because the devil's going to speak great swelling words. 
The devil is going to say the negative. The devil is going to tell you no. Uh, but when God speaks to you, you have to hold on to what God says. You got to hold on to his word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The word of God is more powerful than anything else. So if God spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. Lord, I thank you right now. Okay. Now, one of the things that God had dealt with me is in his word is in this book of Numbers. Here the children of Israel have left uh, Egypt. And God had given them a promise. God had promised them that they would go into uh, a land that flow of the milk and honey. How many of you here, God has given you a promise? Uh, God has spoken to you. Almost everyone here, everybody here, God has uh, spoken to you. Can you connect with that word today, that song for the promises of God, a yea, and in him, amen? All right. Vanda Smith, will you read for us? Numbers 14 and 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the hand of God. For would God we have died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be afraid? Were it not better for us to return unto Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. So here is, in the context, God had raised up Moses. Moses had traveled to Egypt. Moses, through God's hand, performed 10 miracles. And uh, Pharaoh said he wasn't going to let the children of Israel go. But because God's hand was with Moses and the many miracles that he wrought, uh, he consented and let the people, uh, the Israelites go. The Israelites are leaving Egypt. They're traveling uh, in the wilderness and they're on the way. God had spoken and said to them, I'm going to take you to the promised land. I want to say quickly, uh, the promised land here uh, is... Uh, uh, a word that God has spoken to the Israelites, but he's speaking to us that he is going to take us to our promised land. Yes. Our promised land is a land that flows with milk and honey. It's the land of prosperity. It, 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 it's where we will receive wealth, where we receive promotions, where God elevates us, where God blesses us, where God recognizes us. God wants his people to be blessed. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, uh, he needs us to be obedient. He needs us to be subject. He needs us to be disciples. He needs us to be dedicated. And, and here God spoke to uh, the children of Israel and said, I'm going to take you to the promised land. Now, when God speaks a thing, uh, there's also a test. There's a trial. Uh, you, you're going to gonna be tested now because he wants to know that you uh, really love him, that you uh, fear him, that you respect him, that you uh, uh, adore him. Here in this particular text, you, you, you're talking about the children of Israel leaving and God, they're there. They're, they've crossed Jordan. They're there at the promised land. God spoke and he sent out two spies, Joshua and Caleb along with ten others. There were twelve spies. Each one represented a tribe. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Uh, just like you have the tribe of the Newells and the tribe of the Sams and the tribe of the Billums. 
Uh, the child of the smith. Uh, somebody tell the Lord thank you. The child of the lions. Lord, I thank you. The child of the Shelley. The child of the Thomases. Lord, I thank you right now. The child of the Wrights. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The child of the Beckwoods. He, he, he sent out spies. Lord, have mercy. Everybody look to somebody and say, I'm a spy. He sent out spies uh, to talk about the land. The spies within the land. And uh, uh, while they were there, uh, they saw uh, uh, how beautiful the promised land was. Uh, they saw how grapes were such great size of clusters uh, that one man couldn't carry. Them. Uh, they had to put them on poles and, and to carry. Uh, Lord have mercy. They saw the rich land and uh, where they can build homes, uh, where they can farm, uh, where they can. Uh, 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 graze the cattle uh, and graze the sheep. Uh, uh, they saw great things. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, uh, everything they saw was beautiful. Uh, the land was full of milk and honey. Uh, there was water and streams uh, everywhere. Uh, prosperity everywhere. Uh, somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you. And, uh, but while they were there, they saw inhabitants. Uh, uh, somebody said xenophobia. xenophobia. See, xenophobia is uh, uh, the fear of strangers, uh, the fear of immigrants, uh, the fear of people coming into the land. Uh, Lord have mercy. They saw uh, giants. Uh, they saw ten uh, men taller than themselves. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the sons of Anak, uh, uh, the Amalekites. Uh, they saw cities uh, that were fortified by cement and walls. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and they had a report. Uh, uh, they brought a report back uh, to Moses and the people. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, Ten of the, the, the spies. Uh, 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 Lord have mercy. Uh, they said, yeah, the land is full of uh, honey uh, and milk uh, and running waters uh, and streams. Uh, but there are giants there. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and the cities are so uh, fortified. Uh, the walls are high uh, and they're impenetrable. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, but two of the spots and said that we can go up and we can displace them. We can war against them. We can take it. We can take the city. Lord, we have mercy. Oh, look to your neighbor and say, we can take the city. Lord, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. I heard that in the spirit. Uh, they said that we can take the city. Uh, but you know, 10 uh, will outnumber two. Uh, a majority uh, perhaps rules. Uh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, the 10 voices uh, were bigger than Joshua and Caleb. Uh, and the people begin to fear. The people uh, then uh, begin to get uh, uh, trepidation. Uh, the people then uh, begin uh, uh, to, to, to doubt. Uh, the people then begin to become full of fear. Uh, somebody say, yeah. Uh, you see, uh, God doesn't want us uh, uh, to be fearful. I heard him in his word when he said, God has not given us uh, the spirit of fear. Uh, God has spoken uh, uh, to the children of Israel. Uh, he wouldn't have taken them uh, oh, uh, through the wilderness. Uh, he wouldn't have performed those miracles. Uh, and God has not brought you this far uh, to leave you. Uh, somebody say, yeah, I might leave you. Uh, but God won't leave you. Uh, somebody say, yeah. Uh, when he called you, uh, then he called you in a crowd. Uh, then he called you in a crowd. Uh, 
I understand the spirit of fear. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. It is real. It does exist. But God is greater than the problem. Thank you, Jesus. I've been in many situations where it looked like I wasn't going to come out. It looked like I was surrounded. Huh? Lord, have mercy. It looked like I was surrounded by my enemies. It looked like my enemies were going to triumph. It looked like my enemies, what they had said, what they had prophesied, what they had dreamed of, Lord have mercy. Look like it was going to come to fruition. Look like it was going to come to pass. But you know what? I prayed. Look at you now. Uh, Judah, he fell into the well. He was cast overboard. Somebody say, yeah. And as a result, he found himself in hell. Lord, have mercy. Help the Holy Ghost. He was there. And he began to pray. He said, Lord, deliver me. He was fear. He was afraid. He didn't want his life to stop. He didn't want to give up the ghost. If I pray, God will deliver me. If I pray, God will bring me out. If I pray, God will fight my battle. Make no mistake about it, but he was afraid of him. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. But that fear motivated him to pray. And through prayer, God brought deliverance. God caused the well to give him up. And then when he got on land, he started running. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. See, God is uh, a forgiving God. Yes, yes, yes. With the children of Israel, God was thinking about destroying everybody. Amen. Moses had to see. He said, if you destroy everybody, then we don't have anyone to testify that you're God and that you're merciful and that you work miracles. So what God did was he... He caused the, the first generation to die off. Yes. The original people who left Egypt, they all died. It was their children that saw the promise. Somebody tell the Lord, 40 years later. So I'm telling you now, if it takes 40 years, wait on it. Uh-oh. You won't lose. If it take 10 years, wait on them. God's going to bring you out. If it take 20 years, wait on it. Lord, have mercy. Now look at here. Caleb was 80 years old. When uh, he was one of the spies, and he brought back the good report. He had to suffer just like everybody else suffered. God uh, extended his task. And he didn't let him see the promised land immediately. Lord have mercy. But look at here. He was 80 years old. Now, to us, 80 years old is old. Lord have mercy. And it may be in some context. Rehoboth, historical Rehoboth, uh, is getting ready to have their convocation. Uh, yeah. And they're led by a pastor that's 85 years old. Yeah. 
walking and talking and preaching, I'm still doing the word, will God. Got churches in uh, the Caribbean, got churches in Jamaica, got churches in England. Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Lord, God will preserve you. Lord, have mercy. I'm saying this because sometimes we don't want to wait. I'm not saying you got to wait to 80 years to receive the promise. It might be five years. It might be two years. It might be 10 years. But if God spoke it, he's going to bring it to pass. And we're going to allow, just don't let you get in. Some prophecies come immediately. Oh, it seemed that way. Somebody yeah. tell the Lord, thank you. I prophesied to Rhonda, and and uh, seemed like in a month or two, it just come to pass. I prophesied to some of you, and it seemed like it's not coming to pass. Oh, but when I pray, I say, God, hold my words up. Don't let my words fall. speak out in the utterance of my own heart. But let what I say be led by you, that you speak to me. Bring the past. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Ah, hallelujah. I know what it is to wait. Lord, I thank you. I know what it is to wait on God. Amen. And to, to see him move and to see the devil speak and look like sun not going to shine. Yes. But you keep trusting him. Yes. You believe him. And don't allow fear to rule your life. Uh, you speak those things that are not as though they were. Brother Greg, Brother Wright, Minister Wright, remind me of a scripture in Bible class. Lord have mercy. He said that uh, Abraham, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Uh, but one of my favorite scriptures uh, is that he staggered not at the promises of God. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, meaning that what God told him, uh, it didn't cause him uh, to waver in faith. Uh, God said, uh, I'm going to make you uh, your seed as the stars of heaven. Uh, look up into the stars. Uh, see and see if you can count them. Uh, your seed. Uh, the man didn't even have a child. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, his wife was old uh, and stricken in age. Uh, somebody say yeah. yeah. Uh, it looked impossible. You ever been in a situation that looks impossible? Got to 
make the way. God got to fight our battle. Yeah, my God. It seems the greatest. Lord, fear is the fear of death. Somebody say, yeah. We know that someone fears of death. Most people. Let it 
know who's still closer to you. The man will tell Lord thank you. A friend will tell you the truth, too. Yeah. Yeah. I have a pastor say, this pastor say that. Yeah. Uh, I always say, this pastor say that. Yeah. Yeah. Say, a friend will say, a true friend yeah. will tell you the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody tell me what they do. We want friends that just going to lie to us. Yeah. You're the best person in the world. Yeah. I love you so much. You do so much for me. Uh -huh. But you won't tell them the truth. You won't That's tell them that. I'm jealous of you. Get your soul right now. Yeah, you, you, you won't tell them get your soul right. right. You won't tell them the correct that's that. Right. But a friend, a true friend, will tell, tell them the truth. Yeah. Somebody yeah. tell them what yeah. And you might not like what they say, yeah. but it's going to help you. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Say that the Lord rebukes you. I cast you out and I send you to the lake of fire to hell. Somebody tell me I'm not afraid of you. Somebody. Get my job! Let me down. Thank you, Jesus. I've been through that. So 
I'm about to tell the Lord thank you. But God is with you. I got this short testimony I'm gonna tell it to you. I don't know how I didn't get fired on my gun. I should by all rights been fired. I was a counselor at Job Corps Center. But somebody said, but God. You heard some of this testimony. I lost my transportation, so I had to hitchhike back and forth to work. We were doing work at 8 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Some days 11 o'clock, some days 8 o'clock. And I had to hitchhike back and forth to work. I was late every day. Somebody tell us what day. Whether it was 8 o'clock or whether it was 11 o'clock, almost every day I was late. Because I had to hitchhike. But as I was hitchhiking, I was praying. Afraid I was going to lose my job, but not fearful. I said, God, you got to go with me. You got to fix this situation. You got to do it. Whatever you're going through right now, you can be afraid, but don't be fearful. Let, let, let the fear motivate you to believe God, to trust God. To pray, to seek him. Whether you're in debt, I know what that's like to be in debt. Thank you, Jesus. Then you think about how am I gonna pay this back? It just don't look like no way, but God will put a rainbow in the sky. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. You were named in a settlement. Money came as a result of the settlement because you were taken advantage of. God work a miracle for you. Just hold it. Just hang in there. No matter what you're going to. No matter what test you're fighting. Thank you, Jesus. Remember, he, he didn't bring you this far to believe in you. Can you say that? He didn't bring me this far to leave me. God didn't bring you this far to leave me. Isaiah and Martha sing a song. They said, you're going to live to see it happen. Prophesize to your own sins. The devil tell you you're going to die. He said, no, I'm going to leave. Uh-oh. What happens is, what happens is, when we hear what the devil says and we internalize it, we think about it. We marinate on it. Until it becomes nothing but fear. But as soon as the devil speaks and says, I'm going to live, say, he speak, you want to die? He said, I'm going to live. He said, you're going to be broke, I'm going to prosper. You're going to be sick, I'm going to be well. Say wellness. Whatever a devil come and he speak, whatever he say. Now look here. He tell you you're gonna lose your job, so I won't get promoted. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all which we ask or think. Come on, put your hands together. You've got a hand clap. Isaiah, can you say that God is able? 
Thank you, Jesus. We're going to take our offering. He's able to do above. I know what you're thinking right now, but he's able to do above what you think. Thank you, Jesus. Lord have mercy. Isn't he man? He's able to do above what you think. God is able to do above what you think. I know five years ago she never think that she would be the chief accounting officer. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God is able to do 